and welcome to the middle school. This is North House. We've been waiting for you. Come on in. Welcome. My name is Sloan and I'm Nate Wooden. And my name is Addie and I'm in seventh grade. We will be discussing current events. Current events can be described as nothing else than current events. As adolescent citizens, it's important to understand what's circulating through our local, state, national, and global community. It is also significant to understand how to solve problems as individuals and as a group. Every Friday, each student brings in an article that will help keep us informed about what is happening on the world, whether it is socially, economically, or politically. Along with this article, we bring in a handwritten summary, an opinion paragraph, and a discussion question that will strike a conversation. This question is also known as an evaluative question, which will help us evaluate our opinion on the topic as well as the topic itself. It's important we have rules that we all agree to. Some rules include be where you are. Be where you are enables us to have nice posture, which intends uh, for us to sit up straight, to maintain eye contact, and to speak up. And another rule is take space, make space. Take space, make space enables us to participate in the conversation, ask clarifying questions, and invite others to the conversation. Other rules include disagree with the opinion of the person. We use phrases like, um, I see your point, but may I add, to disagree respectfully. Because of COVID, our community is not able to be in a building together. So every Friday, we go into two separate groups, one, mass, one garden range during mass seminar and one in North House for current events. In current events, we start with our etiquette and guidelines, as previously mentioned. Voting. So we all go around and, discuss, and tell each other our title and our discussion question, which Sloane mentioned is an evaluative question. Then we will all vote on which person's title and discussion question we like most, and then they will read aloud their title, summary, opinion paragraph, and their discussion question, and then it will be discussed. Some of the topics we have talked about before include women's rights, immigration, politics, and social justice. Although we have a lot of freedom on what topics we're allowed to bring in, sometimes the topics are specified. Usually these topics relate to what we're learning in humanities or even science. One topic that we are not allowed to bring in is pop culture, because it is very hard to have a formal discussion on those types of topics. The current events has taught us many things, such as how to debate, how to be an informed citizen, and how to develop a deeper connection with the person, and to also disagree with their views or opinions respectfully. Everything the middle school community does has a purpose to help us in our future and even our present. Thank you for watching. My name is Rona, and this is Katie, and we'll be talking to you about humanities. When you study humanities, we study human society, culture, and the human story over time and place. At the beginning of the year, we roll out the human story timeline. We know the important places, people, times, and events on it. Then we study these things. So far, we have studied pre-Columbian American, Renaissance, Medieval, and many more. We have humanities three days a week in a three-week cycle for two hours. In this time, we listen to a presentation given by our teacher and take notes on it. Then we have enough time to do a deep dive into a chosen topic. Then we share our knowledge via research papers, presentations, or projects. When we interact with the text, we highlight and write questions. Then we talk about these questions during the class. This helps us get a better understanding of the text and help us interact with it more. After we finish the readings, we then move on to the outline and note-taking process. After this, we begin multiple drafts of research papers. When we revise these drafts, we make sure to not only correct grammar mistakes, but also making sure we have more than a surface level understanding of what we have read. After we do that, we move on to presentations. We usually do work of the hands, which can be skits, poems, songs, or many more things. This is an example of a work of the hand. It was a model of the Brewster Mansion made by a student. We generally go along with pres slideshow presentations. We take notes during these presentations to not only understand the text, but make sure that we are paying attention. My favorite unit that we have studied this year is the medieval period. In this time, I got to portray a knight and a skit with some of my peers. Some other projects that we did during that unit were poems, pictures, and Google Slides. My favorite unit that I have done is speaking the Hudson Studies unit. In this unit, we go to downtown Hudson, Ohio, and we learn about our city. We talk to local government officials, 
and local business owners. In preparation for this trip, we each researched a topic and we present on it to the class. We also plan out the days that we will be there, including walking time, where we eat lunch, and who we visit. We take what we learn in humanities and we apply it to real life situations. Next year, I'm looking forward to trips like West Virginia and peace studies, where we get to learn about peacemakers. Hello, I'm Isabella in the 8th level here at the Hudson Montessori Middle School. I'm Nicholas, and this is my first year here at the middle school. We will be showing you more about the language art classes that we have for three times a week for one hour each time. The skills we learn in language arts help us through all of our subjects and community work. It also helps us to become a better, more contributing member of society. We practice skills related to language and its art with reading, writing, and poetry. In the past, we've learned language in many new ways, such as writing short stories, performing plays, writing thank you letters, and writing letters of affirmation. A, bar, a big part of our time in class is spent on discussing books we've read. These books often correspond with other subjects such as humanities and science. Books about the Industrial Revolution, like Liddy and Oliver Twist. We have Socratic seminars on the books that we read. We discuss, interpret, and evaluate the books by asking questions that others will answer with evidence from the text. The questions we bring to seminar are evaluative questions, meaning evaluating your opinions and values, Interpretive, meaning interpreting the text, and factual, meaning gathering factual and direct information from the text. We are also assigned essays, such as five paragraph essays, expository essays, comparison essays, and thematic essays. We go through a five-step process to polish our work to make sure we are effectively communicating and contributing to our ideas. These five steps are brainstorming, writing a rough draft, peer editing, guide editing, and revising our work. Sometimes we go through this process many times to ensure our work is at its best. Another indispensable part of our curriculum is poetry. We learn how to analyze poetry along with learning how to use figurative language. In this class, we get to learn about different words that will be used in our vocabulary as we grow. Called Word of the Week. In Word of the Week, we, a student will bring in a word to show the class words like sanguine, conjecture, and many others are described in Word of the Week, covering its part of speech, origin, a sentence with the word in it, and the definition of the word. In this class, we learn about life, language, how to develop our reading and writing skills, and to speak with precision. Hello, my name is Audrey Perry, and today I'll be sharing information with you about our class trips and learning experiences off the campus. We go on about three trips in normal times, but keep in mind since the pandemic, we have not gone on any trips this year. But when everything is normal, we can go on trips again as a community. Our whole goal for our trips is to be travelers, not tourists. Here's a quote. Travelers go to learn, while tourists simply look. John Steinbeck, from the book Travels with Charlie. The students plan out all of where we will go and what we will do on our trips. The teachers, however, take care of major travel arrangements. We normally spend four days and three nights in a hotel. Now I will tell you about the actual destinations we go. The first trip we go on is in the beginning of the school year and we go to West Virginia. It is a community building trip to get to know each other and do a lot of fun things. We go places like zip lining, swimming, white water rafting, mud obstacle course, and many other fun things. The next trip we have is Hudson Studies. For Hudson Studies, like in the name, we study Hudson as a town and how a city in general functions. We see many interesting things such as the mayor, the library, the cemetery, and the Hudson television station. The last two trips we go on are Washington, D.C. and New York City. Each student will go on each of these trips between their two years of middle school. For Washington, D.C., we study peace. We go to places like some monuments, some museums, and the Arlington Cemetery. For New York City, we study immigration. We go to places like Ellis Island, Chinatown, Grand Central Station, and many other interesting places. Overall, our trips are a ton of fun and we learn a lot as well. Hello, my name is Clara. And my name is Renata. Our middle school has an outdoor environment that includes three beehives, garden beds, two work sheds, a greenhouse, and beautiful grounds and scenery. We must work hard to care for them and the environment. One of the outdoor areas of our middle school is our three beehives. The beehives produce honey and wax, which contribute to our economy. 
When we go into the beehives, we must wear a beekeeping suit such as this one to avoid getting stung, and bring tools with us such as a smoker and a hive tool. When we go in, we ensure that there is a queen bee in each hive, and if there are offerings of honey and wax, we might harvest them. This is what a frame inside a beehive looks like, and if it was in there right now, it would have either honey or wax or the bee's uh, larva in it. Uh, the honey contributes to many of our products, including our bottled honey, and the wax contributes to our lip balm and our candles. The beehives are also an opportunity to study honeybee science, such as honeybee biology, how the bees produce honey and wax, and how they pollinate our gardens. The gardens are a very important part of microeconomy. In the gardens, we grow raspberries, tomatoes, mint, dill, cilantro, peppers, and garlic. The gardens produce many of our products and ingredients. Some of the jam we make at the middle school and sell at anyspecialties.org is made freshly from our raspberries and peppers. Um, the gardens give the students not only a chance to grow plants, but to gain knowledge and excitement over agriculture. The students get to plan and share new ideas for new plants to grow and new products to make with the help of our gardens. Although the gardens and the bees contribute many things in the winter, they contribute even more in the spring. We are excited to go inside the beehives in the spring and grow more plants in the gardens. We are also excited to go to the to have a plant sale and go to Hudson Farmers Market. The beehives and the gardens are a very important part of our learning environment. They contribute many things to our microeconomy and our learning, and our middle school will not be the same without them. We are very glad to have our beehives in our gardens and everything else in our outdoor environment. Hello, my name is Christopher and my name is Landon and today we will be talking about microeconomy at our middle school. In microeconomy there are many divisions and committees that model a business enterprise. Our first division is farm where we use and care for the land like our beehives and gardens to make products such as lip balm, jam, and honey. Our second division is hospitality which is our coffee business. Unfortunately we could not run the coffee business this year because of the pandemic. Lastly is our service division. The service division assists the people around us by helping out and doing community service. Some of our major service projects over the past years have been training a service dog, uh, helping out the Heidi Larwin Foundation, and uh, we created a free food transfer for non-perishable goods this year. Along with our three divisions, we have four committees. The first committee is marketing, and that is where we get the word out about our student-run business. We do things like create pamphlets, flyers, and signs, and we have even started to create our own website with help and guidance from the middle school guides. Our second committee is production, where we produce the products that we sell in our business. Some of these products are cocoa cones, jewelry, jam, honey, lip balm, and many others. We also have uh, creative expressions where we use to connect disciplines and find a purpose in our work. On our campus, we have raised garden beds, which we are expanding this year. The third committee that we have is quality control and inventory. Quality control and inventory quality controls products, meaning they make sure they are up to our standards and make sure that they are reflected on the website. And inventory are all of our products that we make to make sure they're for sale on the website. Quality control and inventory have been very important this year due to the fact there are no in-person sales due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have used the website solely for our sales and the quality control and inventory students have been very important in making our sales run smoothly. During our holiday sale, the biggest sale of the year, we made $1,700 and we will be using that to reinvest into our products as well as using that as a per diem for trips like Hudson Studies or West Virginia. The fourth and final committee is finance and Landon will be talking more about that. I'm the ma manager of finance and in finance and our other divisions and committees we learn life lessons that will help us to become a successful adult. For example, in finance we write checks, we reconcile the NHS bank account, and we also learn how to control budgets, receipts, and invoices. Also, the grounds group has to learn how to take control uh, and maintain the outside in our campus. Overall, we learn young entrepreneurial skills and learn how to run a successful business. One of the ways we do this is by going to the Hudson Farmers Market every fall. This year we were not able to due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but when we do, 
We go there and learn skills like how to treat a customer and how to cater to their needs. As well as the farmer's market sale, we have sales like the holiday sale, as mentioned before, Grandparents' Day sale, Pumpkin Patch, as well as the Valentine's Day sale. Thank you for watching our presentation, and we hope to see you soon. Welcome to math class. Math class is one of our favorite classes of the day. We have math classes on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. We always start math class out with problem of the day. These problems are chosen as review problems to help us prepare for math classes. They are chosen out of standardized tests such as the ISEE or the PSAT, which we will be taking in the future. These also help us prepare for those. The way problem of the day works is the teacher will pick a problem of the day from those standardized tests such as this and the students will write them in their binders. Then, when they finish writing them, they will raise their hands so, to let the teacher know that they're finished. Then the teacher will call on them so they can um, walk up to the board and start solving it. Then, if another student has a different way of solving it than the student at the board, they will keep their hand raised so the student at the board will call on them for them to come up and show their different way of solving it. This usually lasts a few minutes until all the different solutions or answers are shown. After new problem of the day, we split them three designated math groups, pre-algebra, algebra 1, and geometry. This is an algebra 1 book, and this is an example of the homework we get. We get homework every math class, which is Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Then, the homework will be due the next math class. We also, use diff we also use materials to help us understand difficult concepts such as algebra tiles and algebraic equations. Our math classes are based off of taking responsibility for learning at our own pace. Every week we have math seminar. So on Mondays we get a worksheet with four or five difficult problems such as this and we have the whole week to solve it. Then on Friday we will split up into two groups and explain the different ways of solving these problems. The reason we do this is to discuss different ways of problem solving and to expand our thinking. We also do projects outside of math that still help us understand math concepts, such as measuring the entire North House or making an escape route. Right now, we're using a stock market simulation. Everyone has a starting amount of $100,000. We're competing to see who will have the most amount of money at the end to win a $25 Amazon gift card. This helps us understand math more and use it in real world scenarios. Microeconomy also requires a lot of math. In finance, we need to calculate how we can use our money along with sales and profit. We need to uh, calculate how much it costs to make a product and how much we earn off the product to ensure that we're running your business correctly. Thank you for watching our presentation on mathematics. Hi, I'm Izzy and this is Connor. We will show you what we learn in science class. We have science differently than many other schools. We have a two hour class, three days a week. This is sometimes called block scheduling, but elementary calls it work time. Every three weeks we switch between the science and humanities. I find it very helpful. Agreed. This way you can focus on whatever class you're currently taking, and you can work time with creating projects or assignments after class. Every other year we switch between life science and earth science. Everybody gets to learn something new during their two years at the middle school. Next year we'll be going over earth studies, which goes over water studies, physics, and chemistry units. This year is life science, which includes environmental studies, anatomy, health, cells and genetics, and plant biology units. We started off the year with environmental studies. During that time, everybody did a research on either an environmental issue or a biome. In the presentations, we talked about how humans negatively affect the biome and how it can be stopped or controlled. On a different note, this is Ryan. We use him to learn the functions and location of all the bones in the body. This is crucial knowledge that you need for a later career as a scientist or doctor. We've also learned where the bones and tissues and organs of the body are located. Most recently, we've learned CPR and other first aid skills. Everyone in the middle school is now CPR certified as it can save a life. We've also done dissections. Are you talking about that one time we dissected a fetal pig? Yep, that was awesome. You can see all the organs of the body up close and first hand. And that was also the unit where we looked at the history of anatomy and went, to de went into depth on the body systems, right? Yep, everybody made a presentation on the body systems and we looked into the big names of history, such as Leonardo da Vinci. After that, we looked at the how teens can live a happier lifestyle and have a healthier life. What's your favorite part about science? Mm -hmm. My favorite part is definitely the artistic extensions. I like those because it was I can use my hands to fully understand what I'm working, what I'm learning about, 
and to make a statement about the issue and aren't just that well. Yeah. I remember that the school teacher came and gave us lessons on how to make a artistic piece that portrayed the contrast between what humans are doing to the environment versus how it was before and how we're harming the environment. We've also done anatomical sketches in the style of Leonardo da Vinci. That's one of my favorite things about Montessori. You get to learn things in all different kinds of ways. I agree. My favorite part about science are probably the labs. You can ex execute the scientific method in a way that expands the knowledge of whatever topic you're currently studying, and they're actually really fun. In order to use the scientific method, you have to ask a question to start out your experiment. And you will create a hypothesis, test it, and if it doesn't work, test it again, then gather your data and draw a conclusion. Science is definitely one of my favorite subjects in school to learn, as every unit provides something new. I wonder what we're studying next unit, but I heard we're going in, into genetics. Hello, my name is Grayson. And I'm Colton. And today we'll be talking about civics class. In civics, we meet once a week to discuss the process and structure of the government and what it means to be a citizen in order to prepare us for the responsibilities of adult life and become informed citizens. This year we spent a large quantity of our time talking about the election between Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Howie Hawkins, and Joe Jorgensen. Civics class is very informative because we were taught by our school principal, who formerly taught high school civics, Mr. Matt Virgil. We learned about the duties of the president, the different levels of government, and the electoral college. Because last year was an election year, we got to witness the proceedings of an election firsthand. We evaluated the positions of each of the candidates on certain political issues and had many elevated discussions on current issues and historical events, such as the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Capitol Insurrection. Here is a sheet that we filled out that examines the views of the presidential candidates on different political issues. Here is a sheet. Here are two sheets summarizing the Cuban Missile Crisis, and which we used as a guideline for our discussions regarding that topic. We evaluated important documents from our nation's history, such as the Declaration of Independence and the American Constitution, and found examples of how these documents affect our lives today. Here's a book that we looked at that contains many important documents from American history. We take what we learned in civics class and implement it into our community. We do this by electing leaders for council meetings and taking peaceful votes on community decisions. We've learned a lot about our nation's history this year and we're excited to become active and informed citizens in our country and the world. Hola, me llamo Madeline and I will give an overview of Spanish. We have Spanish two times a week on every Monday and Wednesday morning. We are split into two groups, seventh and eighth graders, and we spend 45 minutes in class with our teacher and 45 minutes in independent, in independent work. Our teacher, Dania Lori, gives us work to do during independent time that pertains to the vocabulary and grammar of that week. Normally, we would all be together and meet four times a week. During our classes, we speak and hear Spanish in the hopes to further our comprehension of the language. The curriculum is Spanish 1, and when we get to high school, we will be ready for Spanish 2. Students at, students at Hudson Montessori are exposed to Spanish from a very young age, but it gets a lot more serious in the middle school. Usually we have tests every Wednesday, but that depends on the difficulty of the lesson and whether our teacher thinks that we are ready or not. In addition, we also have a project every week that pertains to what we are learning. For example, one time we made Spanish videos that showcased our community using the vocabulary that we were studying at the time. Um, in addition, we also have many projects that include artistic aspects. The purpose of studying Spanish is to develop a second language and to see other world cultures and views. Gracias. Adios. Hi, my name is Josie. And my name is Gabby, and we're going to be talking about expressions and ensemble. We have expressions and ensemble every Wednesday. This is a perfect break in the academic week where we can explore our creativity and physical education interests. The purpose of expressions is to have fun, learn new things, gain skills, and work with specialists in the field. These specialists are people within our local community who manage our small group expressions that include lots of individualized help. 
To choose our expressions, we have something called student choice. How it works is you rank all of your options, one through however many options there are, and a teacher goes through them and chooses your expressions depending on how many people are interested in those same expressions. We keep the same expressions for about five to six weeks, but sometimes we have repeating expressions with a new group of students guided by that same specialist. Our morning begins with Spanish and leads on to physical expressions. In physical expressions, we do activities like fencing, yoga, dance, creative movement, and outdoor sports like soccer, volleyball, and baseball. We also do traveling physical expressions where we leave the middle school campus and do activities like horseback riding, hiking, biking, and bowling. But due to COVID, we can't travel this year. After physical expressions, we have creative expressions and ensemble. In creative expressions, we do activities like candle making, jewelry, ukulele, American Sign Language, baking, computer science, and culinary arts. In some of these expressions, we make products for our business or we take them home. After creative expressions, we go to our small group orchestra where we play orchestral songs like Star Wars, My Favorite Things, Disney Film Favorites, and Classical Music. We also do counting and clapping activities to rhythms. In our small group orchestra, we have a variety of instruments like flutes, clarinets, cellos, and violins. If you do not play an instrument, we have a free choir work period where you can work on homework or other responsibilities. Everyone's favorite day is Wednesday because of ensemble expressions and all the new skills we learn. Hello, my name is Ella. In the HMS Middle School community, is it, a, it is important to us to keep our environment clean and orderly so that we are prepared to learn. We learn valuable life skills such as how to vacuum, clean, or dust properly, and we also learn how to maintain our many materials. This is called practical life. On community work days, we have the grounds crew and the hospitality crew. The grounds crew will fix broken things, shovel snow and gravel, and pick flowers for the environment. The hospitality crew will welcome any visitors that we have. I am the manager, and this is our responsibility when I check off the students when they are done with their job. It is important to have a manager to make sure that the student has completed their job thoroughly. The manager will take a look around the room and make sure that the student did complete their job. Normally, we would, have, we would choose jobs at random from a box, but to maintain proper coronavirus precautions, we are in separate homers and the guides must choose our jobs for us. Ella, will you read me your placards? Placards are, um, are little signs that tell the person what they need to do to complete the job thoroughly. So I wrote the date reminders, I vacuumed, and I dusted the shelf. I also put up the chairs, which is a weekly task. Weekly tasks Tasks are jobs that we only need to do once a week to keep our environment clean. These can include washing the windows or putting up the chairs. Outside, we harvest and prune the gardens and sweep the side off the grass in between the two buildings. In North House, where we learn language arts and humanities, we carefully care for the kitchen and locker area, along with vacuuming and mopping the floors where needed. In Garden Lane, where we learn mathematics and science, we carefully care for the kitchen and locker room area, along with cleaning the windows and vacuuming and mopping the floors. We take pride in the work that we do, both in class and after, because these are important life skills that adults need to possess as they take on more responsibilities and learn to help each other. Do you think you could do the hygiene facilitator, the person who isn't, the person who has this job isn't here today? The hygiene facilitator is a new position that is around here because of COVID-19. The hygiene facilitator sanitizes all materials and also takes hand sanitizer around the tables before and after we eat lunch and snack. Thanks, Ella. Of course. That is our practical life routine. We clean in, at the end of the day in both buildings for about 10 to 15 minutes. We hope you learned a lot about the middle school and stay safe. Bye. Bye.